morning, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts, and this is Scott's Bugatti, Bugatti Atlantique, and what I found out was there's uh, a bunch of different versions of this, and they all have these little subtle differences on the front fenders, the back fenders, and Scott liked this version the best. You're not going to be able to see the details that uh, Scott likes about it because they're not done. It's in the front fender and it's well, it's in the rear fender. He's got the rear fender up there. You can see a little bit of that, but you can see he made a lot of panels. He was here for my 13-day class, and then he extended it four more days, and he had a little bit of help from a couple other guys at the class, but. Uh, Pretty much Scott, I would say, did about 85% of the work here by himself. I helped him with a few things here and there when he needed it. But uh, you get one-on-one -on -one attention if you need it when you're at the class, extended class. And you can see how nice all these little details are. Now it needs to be, all the panels need to be trimmed and then welded. We got a few, one weld on the rocker sill there. Uh, that was just to show him how he's gonna have to do the welding and all these other panels have got to be a little tuning to them the hood last night i helped him uh, put this uh, roll in it the hood's pretty simple actually there's got to be a bend but we weren't ready to do the bend and scott put the uh, flanges on the door skin which he made a couple days ago and all the uh, rockers are all flanges so some of the panels have the flanging done on them and this rear fender, he made a good start on the rear fender. And the other version of the Bugatti has a rear fender that actually wraps around in the back and joins the other rear fender. But this one has a little catwalk between the fender and the body, which he hasn't uh, wire formed out yet. And he's going to do that when he gets back to Texas. And the window surrounds and stuff have to be welded in. They're really deep and it would have been difficult to, to make all those pieces. So he's gonna make those on a break, use a shrink a stretcher, put them in and then weld them. And he'll probably do the same in the front. Well, but no, he's got enough material. I think the front one will be able to form right out of the panels. So I'll bring Scott in and uh, Scott's gonna say a few words. This is his last day. We're about to load the, the car up. He spent 17 days. So Scott's staying in front of the car here right over here and uh you know i just want to say you know th thanks for coming and what a great project and um I, I ask you a few questions the questions would be what was the most difficult part of uh, this challenge of building these panels um some of the some of the uh the panels look pretty simple but when you get right down to it like like on top of the door they're they're curved in, in several directions so while they look pretty simple on the wire frame by the time you you've rolled them all out there they're actually pretty complex and we're not using a stretcher shrinker on the edges or any of that it's all being rolled uh, on the on English wheel so uh, so I've learned a lot that that's been a challenge but I'll be able to, to do this a lot more quickly on the second side yeah and the majority of the panels that are on the car are actually kind of low crown uh, English wheel panels. Few of them you ham it a little bit to stretch them out faster. Yep. But on the on the fenders, now you've got a high crown situation. And that one we we took put. I showed you how to put the gathers in it and how to knock the gathers down. And uh, that process now, I think you got a pretty good handle on that now. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So. When you get back to Texas, uh, do you have a, uh, a, a, a sequence of events that you want to see happen next? Are you going to start welding these panels together? Or? Yes, I have a couple of like the fender I need to finish, um, but then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll weld up the panels on this one side, get them perfect just the way I want them, and then I'll do the flexible shape patterns and then build the other side. So, so I want to have one side completely finished and then do the other side. Okay. Um, so you're not going to make a wire form for the other side if you don't have to. You, you'll be able to flexible shape pattern these panels and then maybe make some kind of temporary supports and so that you can see how everything's going together and uh, then then weld it all up. And then you're going to do super Laguerre uh, inner structure yep. I, I uh, so. as opposed to the original ones would have had a hardwood inner structure. 
So the superligera takes up less room and uh, basically you just keep throwing metal at it until it's strong enough. It's got to be uh, adequate so that uh, the big issue on, on a car and when you're building it is it's got to be uh, rattle free pretty much. So you want to make it nice and rigid. And the, the big hazard is uh, uh, a potholes and, and also railroad tracks. When you go over those, you don't want the car falling apart on you. So uh, you start with uh, a whole bunch of uh, Superligera in a structure and then you, you know, torque it a little bit and see if the body's moving in any way, close to slam the doors and all that. So you got all that ahead of you, which is all a great discovery uh, that has to be figured out and uh, it's it's a great challenge and, and uh, challenges your brain and and uh, who who wouldn't like to do that if you're going to be building a whole car, you know? Yep. Well, so. I, I, I boxed the frame, which was not originally boxed. Yeah. And uh, that, that should make it uh, pretty, pretty stiff. Oh, yeah. In the last video, I mentioned uh, the frame. We had a little bit of it in the first video. So I'm going to close out with just showing uh, what he did with the frame. And I guess you'd had some drawings. You found some drawings yeah, for the I frame. I found the original blueprints from 1937, I believe. Okay. So yeah. I, I I replicated. So essentially, this is is the same as the original Bugatti frame. Okay. So let's take a look at the frame. It, the the only differences that he made was uh, he boxed it up, which mean, means it's even stronger. And it was an eighth inch wall uh, plate that you made it out of. Wall. Yeah, eighth inch, and he's got his winter's rear end in the front, and he, he built his own Bugatti style uh, front axle, and uh, it, it just doesn't get any better. I mean, he did a beautiful, beautiful job, and let me show you the front axle. There's the front axle. That's all the way Bugatti did it. Uh, well, this one, he's, of course, he's gonna he's modern, so he's gonna put a Jag six in it. Uh, an XK motor, and also he's got uh, was it Wildwood brakes or something on it? Yeah, I have Wildwood. But Wildwood brakes. Yeah, but they'll be they'll be covered so they don't look like disc brakes on them. Okay, so he's got four wheel disc brakes versus the original car would have had mechanical brakes, I think. And uh, he's got the grill to make. I told him to make all the trim pieces, uh, which there's not many of them, uh, all out of stainless. You know, even the door handles. This is just get a. A chunk of stainless and whittle it away a little bit and make your own door handles and then polish them all up so that's the uh the final video of the bugatti build by scott from texas it's a masterpiece already as you can see uh he did as well as you possibly can this is uh professional quality work and uh, he had very little experience before he came to the class so uh, I just want to thank you, Scott, again for coming to my class, and uh, maybe we'll see you again in the future. You said you got a couple other ideas for other cars once you get this done, but you're going to be busy for maybe another year or two. And yeah. this is the last shot of the Bugatti. It's going to be loaded in a trailer in a few minutes. Off it goes. It's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts. Thanks for watching. Yeah.